Once upon a time ago, our story began. But before we begin, let's send salam on the final prophet sent to man. When the wonderful children hear that, what do they say? Excellent job! Prophet Muhammad and the Muslims had decided that they needed to immigrate to Medina. To immigrate means to travel to a different country to live there. They knew they had to get away from the wicked kuffar. So day by day, little by little, the Muslims began to flee Mecca and go to Medina. But Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, still did not immigrate to Medina. He knew he could not leave until Allah sent down the angel Jibreel with the command to travel. The evil kuffar, though, began to notice that the Muslims were escaping Mecca and heading to Medina. They called for an emergency meeting. We need to make a plan, they said, a plan to end Islam and the Muslims once and for all. If we leave the Muslims to go to Medina, they'll grow stronger there and become a threat to us. So the chiefs of the kuffar gathered together in a house called Dar al-Nadwa. What was it called? Dar al-Nadwa. The chiefs thought and thought. One of them said, What if we expel Muhammad? We kick him out of our lands. We leave him to go to any other country, but he stays away from us. But somebody replied to this, That is not a good idea at all. Don't you see how beautiful Muhammad's speech is? And how anyone who sees and hears him loves him? If he goes anywhere else, all the people there will follow him, and they'll be stronger than us and come fight us. So then another chief said, The best thing to do is to imprison Muhammad, to keep him trapped inside somewhere. But then someone else replied, No, of course not. His Muslim friends would never leave him imprisoned. They would attack us, free him, and they would win. We need to think of something else. Then the worst and most evil of the kuffar, Abu Jahl, said, I have an idea no one has said yet. What is it? the chiefs asked. The best thing to do is to kill the prophet, Abu Jahl told them. Every tribe or family will choose their strongest youth. Then all the strong youths will gather together and will attack Muhammad at his house at the same time, killing him with one blow. With all the tribes working together, Muhammad's family won't be able to take them on or avenge Muhammad's death. The kuffar agreed to this horrible, horrible plot. They agreed that when Prophet Muhammad went to sleep, the strong youths would all gather outside of his house, armed with swords, and then attack him together, each hitting him with one single blow. Whoa! What an evil plot it was! Such pure evil! And against who? Against the most perfect human in the whole wide world, the person with the kindest heart, the person who never hurt anybody or any animal or even a tree, who only wanted them to listen to his words so that they could be good believers who did kind and righteous things, and so that Allah would love them and admit them to paradise. But their hearts were filled with evil and their thoughts cruel. The Kuffar thought that they could get away with their plot. They thought that nobody had seen their meeting or heard their plan. 
they didn't know that Allah hears everything and sees all that we do. Allah heard their words and their plan. He was watching them and he would not let them hurt Prophet Muhammad. Allah sent the angel Jibreel to warn Prophet Muhammad. Jibreel warned the Prophet from sleeping in his bed that night. He also told the Prophet that the evil Kuffar were making an evil plot to kill him, and he informed Prophet Muhammad that the time had come to immigrate to Medina. Who was living with Prophet Muhammad in his house during this time? It was Ali. May Allah be pleased with him. At that time, Ali was a young man. But he was a good Muslim, kind and very strong. And Ali was very brave and was not afraid of anything. Prophet Muhammad told Ali that the angel Jibreel had come and had warned him of an evil plot. And he told him that he would need to travel or immigrate to Medina. But before he was to travel, there was something very, very important that needed to be done. Do you know what it was? Prophet Muhammad told Ali that if there was anything in their house that was a trust for the kuffar, they would need to return it before traveling to Medina. You see, the kuffar used to leave some of their money and things with Prophet Muhammad, kind of like how we leave our things in a bank. They knew he was trustworthy and took good care of their things. Even in the most difficult of times, Prophet Muhammad thought of others and would not let their things be forgotten or lost. Can you imagine that? They were plotting to kill him, and he was thinking about returning their belongings to them. The strong youths of the kuffar gathered together in front of Prophet Muhammad's house so that as soon as he went out to pray, they would attack him. They stood there, the strongest youth from every tribe, each one armed with a giant sword. But Allah was stronger than them, and he would protect the Prophet that he had chosen. Prophet Muhammad told Ali to sleep in his bed that night and to cover himself with the Prophet's blanket. He reassured him that Allah would protect him. Sure enough, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, really did sleep in the Prophet's bed and with his blanket. And he was confident that none of the kuffar would hurt him since Prophet Muhammad had told him that. Meanwhile, the strong youths of the kuffar peeked in a hole and saw someone sleeping in the bed. They thought it was Prophet Muhammad sleeping. But of course, it was actually Ali, the brave and strong young man, sleeping in his place. As for Prophet Muhammad, well, Prophet Muhammad knew that he was a real messenger and that Allah loved him and would protect him. So, do you know what he did? He walked right out of his house, right in front of the youths, and between them, Allah made the youths' eyes not see him. Remember, it was Allah who created their eyes in the first place and let them see, so he could easily make them not see. So they stood there like statues, not seeing anything or doing anything. Prophet Muhammad gathered some dust from the ground and blew it on their heads, and as he was walking outside, he recited, <laughs> That means Allah put a covering on their eyes, which made them not see anything, just as if they were sleeping. They stood there waiting and waiting for Prophet Muhammad to come out until finally a man saw them all gathered together and approached them and asked, What are you all waiting for? They said, Muhammad. He said, What a disappointment. You have lost. He passed right through you all and he blew dust on your heads. The man left them and they said, But we did not see him. 
and then began to clear the dust off of their heads. They decided to peek from an opening in the door, and they saw someone sleeping in the bed. Oh, he's still sleeping inside, they said. He didn't go out or anything, and they stood there, still waiting for a long time. Until, finally, they discovered the truth, which drove them crazy. What did they discover? That it was Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, who was sleeping in the bed. They couldn't understand how this had happened. When Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, left his house, where did he go? He went to his dear friend, Abu Bakr Siddiq, his closest companion and the person he loved most. We love him too because Prophet Muhammad loved him. Abu Bakr Siddiq had begun preparing to immigrate himself, and he had wished with all his heart that he could travel with the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad went to him and told him that Allah had sent the angel Jibreel and had ordered him to immigrate to Medina. Abu Bakr Siddiq was thrilled to hear the news that he would travel with the Prophet, the person he loved most in the whole wide world. Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr Siddiq agreed with a man in Mecca to show them the way to Medina. But Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr decided to go to a far place and hide there for a bit first. They knew that the Kuffar were going to be searching for them everywhere. They went to a faraway mountain, a mountain called al Thor. At the opening of the mountain was a small cave. They hid inside for three days, so that none of the kuffar could find them. But how did they eat, you might be wondering. Well, Abu Bakr's daughter, Asma bin Abi Bakr, was a brave and strong woman. She wasn't scared of the kuffar. She would go and bring them the food every day. Meanwhile, the wicked kuffar were going crazy. How could Prophet Muhammad have escaped? How could they not have seen him or felt anything? They kept searching everywhere for him, and they decided to offer a reward of 100 camels to anyone who could tell them where he was. Somebody finally thought and said they could be hiding in Jabal al-Thur. Quickly, the kuffar went there. Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr Siddiq were inside the cave in the mountain. They could see the legs of the kuffar. Abu Bakr began to feel afraid that the kuffar would find Prophet Muhammad. But Prophet Muhammad told him not to be scared. Prophet Muhammad knew that Allah would make him victorious over the evil kuffar. Prophet Muhammad looked at Abu Bakr and said, What do you think of two? the third of whom is Allah. He meant, don't be afraid. Allah was with them with his power and might. They were the ones who were on the truth and doing the right thing. Allah would grant them victory. The evil kuffar were standing right next to the cave, and if they looked in, they would find Prophet Muhammad. But who created their brains and their eyes? Allah. Allah made them not think and not see what was before them. And so the kuffar walked away, sad and defeated. They had spent three days searching for Prophet Muhammad, and they had been unable to find him. And they won't find him. Because Allah grants victory to his prophet and to the truth, and Allah defeats evil, no matter how strong it is. And so, Prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings be upon him walked out of the cave, and Abu Bakr too, so that they could begin their journey to Medina. What do you think is going to happen on that journey? We'll find out in the next episode. Peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad. Oh.